Hello there and welcome to this video on covalent bonding which is going to focus on what a covalent bond is and what the elements involved in covalent bonding are. Okay, so in the previous videos we focused on what ionic bonds were. As a recap, that involves a metal and a non-metal where the metal wants to donate an electron and it wants to give it to your non-metal. So the metal wants to lose electrons to get a full outer shell and the non-metal wants to gain them to get a full outer shell. But what happens if you have two non-metals that react together? The problem there is that both of them are actually going to want to, to gain electrons. And that's the case. Every single non-metal wants to gain electrons to get a full outer shell. So that means they can't react the same way. And the solution is they share their electrons. So if we were to look at a definition then for what a covalent bond is, we talk about non-metals. So in this case, we need two non-metal atoms, or two or more non-metal atoms, and they are sharing a pair of electrons. Now, an example of that is hydrochloric acid, which is HCl. Hydrogen has one electron in the outer shell, and chlorine has seven electrons in the outer shell. So they overlap, and that there that I've drawn in the middle is a shared pair of electrons. Both of them now have a full outer shell. Chlorine has eight, and hydrogen has two, which is all it needs in that first shell. And this is called a dot and cross diagram. So in the exam, if you're trying to figure out whether it's ionic or covalent bonding, look at the elements involved. If it's a metal and a non-metal, it's ionic. If it's two or more non-metals, it's covalent. OK, let's have a look at a couple of questions then. So the first one should be fairly straightforward, which is define a covalent bond. So what is a covalent bond? It's worth two marks. The second part is which of the following are covalent compounds and explain your answer. So you have NaOH, HCl, CO2, NH3 and FeCl3. So the hint for you there is on your periodic table, you have that zigzag. In the exam, I would always recommend drawing that zigzag because then you know that everything to the right of that zigzag is your non-metal. Everything to the left is a metal. Once you know that, you can figure out the type of bonding involved. So pause the video, have a go at the two questions, and we'll see how you've done in a minute. OK, let's have a look. So first things first, definition of a covalent bond. Two things we're looking for. It's a shared pair. And then what's a shared pair of? Electrons. So you must have that pairing. If you just say shared electrons, you'd only get one mark. The shared pair is what gets you the second mark. And then we have a look on here. So we have NaOH. Na is down here. O is over here and hydrogen's up here. So we've got two non-metals and a metal. So it's not that one. H we know is a non-metal. Chlorine is over here. So that is one of them. Carbon dioxide. Carbon is over here, so it's a non-metal. Oxygen is a non-metal, so it's covalent. NH3, nitrogen here, hydrogen here, both non-metals, covalent. FeCl3, Fe is iron. Cl3 is chlorine, so we have a metal and a non-metal, so that one's going to be ionic. And then the explanation for your answer is, if it's covalent, they only contain non-metals. Okay, hopefully that's made that video a bit clearer for you. Have a look at the review question and see if you can do it, which is describe the difference between ionic and covalent bonding in terms of electrons. Have a go at that, and that ends this video.